I'm afraid it looks like I still won't be able to make it tonight. Oh, that's really a shame, because April's still here, and Draper's coming over, and they want us to go out to dinner with them. Oh, that would have been nice. We don't do that too often with those suburbanites. Yeah, well, after the baby's born, we're going to do it even less often. Now, come on, Miles, make an effort. I really don't see how, unless my business is taken care of in very short order. Well, you, do you have a patient coming? Something like that. As a matter of fact, I think she's here now. Oh, okay. Well, I'll let you off the phone. Maybe you'll get here sooner. I love you. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Please, come in, Mrs. Madison. You know, I haven't the faintest idea why I accepted this invitation of yours, Dr. Cavanaugh. That strange thing you said to me on the phone, it makes absolutely no sense at all. Do you want to sit down? Uh, well, I have no intention of making myself comfortable. I have a dinner engagement, so I'd like to get this over with just as soon as possible. I, I mean, the only reason I came is because you said it had something to do with Deborah Saxon, and as you know, I'm very fond of the girl, and if there's something I can do for her... What are you doing for her right now, Mrs. Madison? Why, nothing. Well, uh, of course, I haven't seen Deborah in the longest time, but, but I know about that terrible ordeal she went through, that... Oh, that rapist who abducted her. I felt just terrible about that. Yes, well, I'm more curious about somebody else at the moment. I'm curious about a woman I met in Deborah's apartment the night I went over there to pick up some of Deborah's things for her. Well, what does that have to do with me? The woman's name was Mrs. Corey. I thought you might be able to tell me about her. Will you do that? Dr. Kavanaugh, if you're under the impression that I know this woman you're talking about, you're mistaken. The name is totally unfamiliar. It was strangely familiar to me. I mean, not that it's that unusual a name. There must be at least a dozen Corys in the Monticello directory. Although none of them have the address of this particular woman. Of course, she did just move into that apartment. Uh, what apartment? The apartment right across the hall from Deborah Saxon. See, Deborah's told me an awful lot about this woman, how kind she is, how much she's done for her, which was especially remarkable because uh, it's an old woman and she's not in the best of health. Uh, Dr. Kavanaugh, will you kindly well, I didn't get... think much about the woman one way or the other. I mean, I was grateful that Deborah, my patient, had somebody nearby to watch out for her. But then I met the old woman myself. And there was something about her that stuck in my head. Mrs. Madison, are you sure you've never heard the name Corey? Martha Corey. Uh, no, never. You see, I thought you might have because you just completed that movie, uh, Mansion of the Damned. That was about the um, Salem witch trials, wasn't it? I thought you might have done some research about that, about the actual witch hunts and the trials. See, it turns out this Martha Corey was one of the first women to be hanged as a witch. Uh, Dr. Kavanaugh, if you brought me all the way down here to chat about something that happened centuries ago. No, 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 no. I'm talking about something I believe is happening right now. Mrs. Madison, you ever heard of a witch cake? No. No, I hadn't either, until I read about it at the local library. Seems they were uh, concoctions made by these witches to effect miracle cures. Of course, most of the time they did more harm than good because of what was in them. <sighs> Just like this cake. Dr. Kavanaugh, are you sure you're feeling well? I know you doctors work dreadfully long hours. You know what's in this cake, Mrs. Madison? Minute traces of barbiturates. Really? No. Yeah. And this cake was given to Deborah by her nice old neighbor. Oh, dear. Are you saying the old woman was trying to poison our Deborah? I don't know. I don't know. The quantity didn't seem to be sufficient for that. Of course, uh, Depending on how much Deborah ingested, she would become weak, tired. With enough accumulation, she could become quite ill, and, uh, yes, eventually she could overdose. Uh, Dr. Kavanaugh, you work for the police, don't you? Yes, that's right. I do forensic work for them when they need me. Uh-huh, and therefore, you're always looking for suspicious circumstances, aren't you? You're sort of medical, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Well, you might say that. 
As a matter of fact, I used the police lab to do the analysis on this. But I don't want you to worry. Nobody knows I did it. And nobody knows the truth about Martha Corey, except me. The truth? Oh, well, now, now, uh, wait a minute. Uh, just let me try and guess. I know. You think this Martha Corey is that witch. You think she's come back to Earth to haunt poor Deborah. I think the witch in this particular case had another name recently. Hester Atherton. Oh, yes, of course. The witch I played in the movie. Um, you think there are similarities, Doctor? Yeah. Took me a while to realize there was a resemblance, but yes. A resemblance? How strange. Since no one outside the movie company has even seen Hester Atherton. And the movie is a long way from release. Well, I see you're wrong, Mrs. Madison. I saw you as Hester, don't you remember? That day then, that Trent Archer became ill and I was called out to the studio. Uh, Dr. Cavanaugh, are you implying that I'm playing the part of this Martha Corey? Yeah, I think that's exactly what you're doing. Oh, that's surely the most ridiculous accusation uh, listen, I've ever Mrs. heard Madison, in my life. I know you don't have any liking for Deborah. You can oh. talk all you want about how fond you are of her, but I happen to know differently. I used to be fond of her, yes. Once. That, of course, was before my husband became even fonder of the girl. I know. I know. Well, the thought occurred to me that you might find it amusing to be playing some kind of practical joke on Deborah. But I tell you, if this is a joke, it's getting out of hand. <laughs> you know, I'm really rather... I'm flattered. Do you honestly think I'm that great an actress that, that I could assume a, a real-life role and get away with it? Yeah, I think you're a very good actress. <laughs> well, aren't you kind? Doctor, you've definitely made my day. Unfortunately, it isn't true. I'm far too busy for practical jokes. But I hope you're not too busy to see a doctor yourself. You do need one, you know. Do I? And I know what he'll recommend. Change of environment. A good long rest in some quiet place. And I'm sure you'll feel so much better in a very little while. You could make me feel so much better in a very little while, Mrs. Madison, if you would just end this masquerade. Oh, no. Perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps it'll take more than a long rest to cure you. You need psychiatric help, Doctor. You're suffering from a very sick delusion. time you got here. What the hell are you doing? Playing Butch Cassidy again? You said you'd be here two hours ago. Here, you better wear this for protection. Since when have you been concerned about me, Cliff Nelson? Who's Deborah? She's in bed. What? Now, take it easy, will you? She's sick, all right? No, you ought to be glad I'm here. You know, I could have been attacked by one of these germs around here. What germs? The doctor came over. She's real sick, and he said she might be allergic to something in this apartment. Hey, you can't go in there. Wait, wait, wait. Overexposure. Overexposure. Okay, okay, right. Look, you better wear this, though, you know, as a mask to protect you. Oh, Cliff. Oh. oh, Steve, it's you. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Where's Miles? He's gone. Where's... Oh, he told me that I was in a lot better shape the last time when I was out in the woods and the last time he examined me. Something else, I think this all happened before 
before I was abducted by that hey, man. You just take it easy, and I want you to rest and relax, okay? That's all I can do. I feel so weak. I can't even make my muscles do what I want them to do. Something else. Nothing seems real. In what way? I don't... I don't know. It's like when you have a fever or something, or you're delirious, and you don't know what's real, and everything's all mixed up. That's the way I feel. I, I don't have a fever. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's coming from the emotional involvements that are yeah. going on, Deborah. You think so? You think it might be psychological? Maybe I'm going crazy or something. Maybe this is the beginning of a nervous breakdown. No, no, don't forget that. <laughs> well, it's yeah. true, you know, all the things that have been happening to me. I'm so mixed up. I don't know Deborah, what to I do. I know, I know. God. Maybe I ought to call Owen and have him come no, back. No, 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 no you finds, can't. If he finds out how sick you are, he'll drop everything and come back, and maybe this will settle things for you. Hmm? No, if Owen was here, just make it worse. How? Well, I'd have to tell him how I feel. I, I don't understand. I'm so glad he went to California. I know, it took the pressure off you. <laughs> Gave me the idea that I could think about how I feel about him. <laughs> I had to see what it was like with him and when he was gone. I, mean, I never felt that hollow kind of feeling, you know, that something was missing. It's not the same like whenever I knew I couldn't see you for a couple of days. There are times when we go for days and we don't see each other. I know, but it's different. Don't you know? Yeah, I knew you were always there. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. I like what you're saying. Madison's terrific, Chief Mallory's terrific. Why, Cliff, you're terrific. Hey, you're sick. I want to buy you a drink. I no, think no, you're no, the no, great no, listen, I think that you caught something there, and now it's rotting away your brain. Oh, you're absolutely right. I'm delirious. Just delirious, and it's contagious, Cliff. Contagious? Uh, look, look, there's some vitamins right there, and you get some fresh air, and you get some sleep, and two aspirins, and listen, uh, uh, I'll send Dr. Kavanaugh over, okay? Cliff! <laughs> if I walked in on one of your meetings. Nancy, it's not the same thing, and I'm sure you don't think it is either. Mind, I've been thinking very carefully about how I feel about this and about what I'm going to say to you. 
Now, I realize that you felt you had to interfere in my business I because... had no intention of interfering. It's just unfortunate that your friend Hayes noticed me. He noticed you because he thought you were a policeman who had come with me, that's why. And that was against our arrangement. Right. All right, if I had been clever enough, I wouldn't have shown any sign that there was any connection between the two of us. But, Mike, you startled me. Yes, I realize that. And I've already told you how sorry I am about what happened. You were spying on me. I was not spying yes, you on you. Were I was spying trying to protect on me, you. And you broke your promise. I did not. That's you the truth. You gave me your word that you wouldn't get in the way. That was the only reason I told you where I was going to meet that man. Mike, you gave me your word. What I said was I wouldn't involve the police. Now, there's a world of difference oh, there. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Are you just because the police didn't come, but you did, it, it wasn't the same. Oh, my. You know the spirit of that promise. Yes, I, uh, I suppose I do. So you admit you were wrong? What do you want me to say? I want you to say that you will let me do my job the way I think it should be done. Please! Hey, hey, guys, you ready to go? Mm, yeah, whenever you say, Nicole. Uh, speaking of these things, mm. uh, Draper and I were just talking about New Year's Eve. I suppose that you and Miles have already made plans for oh, New Year's Eve. Oh, you know Year's we don't have plans. We talked about it in the office today. Thank you. Huh. I guess uh -huh. I forgot. April's been trying to talk me into going to Margot's for New Year's Eve. And if you're not careful, you're going to end up there with us. Oh, I don't know. It sounds like it would be a really good idea. It would be fabulous oh. watching the whole city celebrate from Margot's Terrace. There you go. Admit it. Margot's would be a terrific place to be. Sounds like there's conspiracy in the air. However, I don't know. I still have a babysitting problem. I'm not at all sure I can get Mrs. Goodman on New Year's Eve, and that's for somebody new. Okay, okay, but let's say you do take care of your babysitting problem. Mm -hmm. Would you and Miles want to go over to Margot's? Well, I honestly don't know. I'd have to ask Miles. You can ask him as soon as he gets here. He may not be getting here. Miles is at the office. I'm serious, Doctor. I wouldn't tell anyone this theory of yours unless you want to gain a very suspicious reputation about your mental competency. Well, then, I think I'm safe. I don't have to tell anybody this theory, Mrs. Madison, because as soon as you walk out of this office, the problem's going to be solved, isn't it? How, exactly? You're going to make me a solemn promise to end this masquerade. You are never again going to go near Deborah Saxon's apartment building as Mrs. Corey or anyone else. And if I do, you'll call the police. I can just tell Deborah. My friend Steve Guthrie, they are the police. They will unmask you, and I don't think you'll enjoy that very much. It's over, Mrs. Madison. Do you understand that? More important, do you agree? You know, Doctor, I've always heard you're supposed to uh, humor people who have delusions. Oh, come on. Come on, Mrs. Madison. Just answer my question, will you? I'll tell you what, Doctor. Just to ease your troubled mind, I'll make you this promise. That I, Nola Madison, will never, never set foot inside of Deborah Saxon's apartment house. As for this mysterious old lady that you're so obsessed with, I can't speak for her. But I'll never go there. Does that satisfy you? As long as we're both saying the same thing. Excuse me. Yeah? Hi, honey. If I'm bothering you, just hang up. No, it's all right. I'm almost through examining my patient. Okay, well, it's just that I wasn't sure you'd be able to make it to dinner, and April has this very important question she wants to ask about New Year's Eve. Well, I'll tell you, let me get this on the other phone, will you? Can you hold on a second? I will be back in a minute.
In excessive use, the stimulant effect, which may produce an exaggerated euphoria, is soon followed by a profound and lasting depression. In cases of large overdoses, the result is amphetamine psychosis. These psychotic reactions, which may occur during its use or after withdrawal, are virtually identical to paranoid schizophrenia.